Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. Today we are going to talk about efficiency. To show you what efficiency is, I'm going to use a little device. This here. Huh? This here. This is a so-called DC-DC converter. Hmm? So actually, if you have a look at this, there is one side where uh, it's written in, plus and minus, and one side where it's written out, plus and minus. And actually what it does, it converts one voltage to another voltage. So, uh, we are going to supp power supply this with a certain voltage. Huh? Then we're going to drain from it. So, we, we this already adjusted to an output. And we will drive a fan here. This little fan, we are going to drive with this. And, well, what we want to know is how much power we are getting in, how much power putting in, and how much power we are getting out of this. So, let's see if, let's see if this is working. So, turn the power source on, and we see it starts spinning. So, Seems like it's it's working at least, yeah? but let's find out how good or bad. Yeah? So actually, what we're going to do here, we have here a DC DC converter set. This should be this DC DC converter. Direct current, direct current converter to connections. And we have the wires here. We have the wires out. And here we are power supplying this fan. Flower. Here we are power supplying a flower. <laughs> it's the fan. All right. It's the fan. So and what do we have? We have here a voltage U1. We have here voltage U2. All right. And we have here a current I1. And we have here a current I2. And I'm going to measure those things now. Uh, and take notes. So here we'll measure a U1 value. Here we'll measure a U2 value. Let's do this. Uh, let's grab. I have here a multimeter. Turn it on. It's spinning. And let's measure. Here we have it. Here this is written 24 volts, but I want to have it exact, all right? So this is why I'm using here my multimeter. Can we read this? No. Turn the light on. Can we read this? No. So let's put this a little bit to the side. All right. Now we can read it perfectly. So let's see the input voltage. Here. Let's measure the input. <laughs> There's a fan. Let's measure the input voltage. Twenty three dot nine six five. Twenty three dot nine six five. Twenty three dot nine six five volts. This was the input voltage. All right. Now let's measure the output voltage. Eleven dot nine eight two. Eleven dot nine eight two. Listen and repeat. <laughs> Eleven dot nine eight two. Eleven dot nine eight two volts. Right. Good. So that's one thing. Okay. Now let's measure the current. Let's measure the current. So 
Let's measure I1. And let's measure also I2. I've shifted all the... Good. Okay, I want to measure here. Here's the connection. This is the connection. So we'll open this connection. And then... I need the other lines. Where are they? Maybe I should clean the desk, but only maybe. Oh, here. Oh, I've already prepared them. So, let's go out here. Yeah, Zack. Let's go into... Move this aside. We know it's spinning. Let's go into our measurement device. Ah, here we hear warning because I set it to to uh, voltage measurement, right? And I put it into here, so I want to have milliamps. Now the warning should stop. Okay, warning is stopped. And the other the other side going out of the measurement device and going into into our DC DC converter and the next thing we should see is actually the value of the milliamps turn it on let's wait until it's almost stable sixty two 60, 62, 60, let's say 61.5. Okay. 61.5 milliamps. And now let's do the same. Now let's do the same at side 2. So we are going to directly connect this again, the voltage source to the DC-DC coupler and now let's remove the plus line from the fan Back. go into the measurement device like that and from the measurement device out and here to the fan and now we should already measure uh, Current number two, turn it on. Here's current number two. Mm. Let's say 99, 99, let's say 99 milliamps. Okay, let's say 99 milliamps All right, turn it off Put this away so I can write a little bit better. It's not blocking me uh, Let's calculate how much power we put into the DC DC converter Okay, let's have a calculation of this so we say P1 equals U1 multiplied by I1 equals 23.965 volts multiplied by 0 0.0615 amps and this equals back here we are uh, 23.965 multiplied by 0 0.0615 equals 1.474 1.474 watts 1.474 watts right. So let's calculate also a P2 equals 
u2 multiplied by i2 and here we have 11.982 volts multiplied by 0 0.099 amps and what we what we got here what we receive here let's see 11.982 multiplied by 0 0.099 and here we have 1.186 watts we enter 1.474 watts and we get out 1.186 watts okay. so there is a coefficient okay. so we have here how much is this p2 compared to p1 equals 1.186 watts divided to by 1474 watt and what is this divided by 1.474 0 0.8048 yeah. and this is 80.48% only 80% of the supplied power, yeah? only 80% of the supplied power will, will see the output. Okay, I supply a certain amount of power and at the output I only see 80.5%. Yeah? This is called efficiency. Eta. This is the efficiency of this DC-DC converter. But what is happening with the with the power? Yeah? With the power. So there the, the power cannot be destroyed. Yeah? Power cannot be destroyed. So I have power losses. Yeah? The power losses are the input power minus the output power. And this is 1.474 watts minus 1.186 watts so the losses are 1.474 minus 1.186 0 0.288 watts these are the losses so we have efficiency and According to efficiency, we have a power loss. What is this power loss doing? Where is it going? It cannot be lost. Yeah? It's making this thing hot. That is actually what is happening. This thing here is getting hot. How hot? Well, depends. So, you can think about when this is getting hot. It will be hotter than the air or surrounding air, huh? and this surrounding and, and, and will start to emit radi radiate power, radiate radiates uh, warm. Yeah? So I have heat radiation, yeah? not only radiation but also convection and so on. So it will it will lose heat, yeah? and how much heat it will lose. Yeah, it will be able to get rid of, let's call it that way, yeah, because this is actually what it does. Yeah? It's getting rid of the heat because those power losses are heating up this device. We talked about this. Yeah? Heating with electricity, those power losses are heating up this device. This device is getting hot and the hotter it gets, the more heat it will get rid of again. Yeah? And there is a certain temperature then where it will get exactly it will get a, rid of exactly that amount of power by radiating by getting rid of the heat yeah. so the heat flow yeah. it's the heat flow which is actually all the power yeah, is depending on the temperature difference between this element, which is heated, 
and the surrounding air and the thermal resistance. So if the thermal resistance is high, yeah, the, the heat flow will be relatively low. If the thermal resistance is low, the heat flow will be relatively high. <laughs> yeah? And on the other hand, if the thermal resistance is low, we don't need that much temperature difference to reach the same heat flow. If the thermal resistance is high, we need a higher temperature ref the difference to reach the same heat flow. We want to have the heat flow in this case of 2 dot, uh, 0.288 Watt. This is the heat flow we have to achieve, then our temperature stays constant. Okay. To reach this heat flow, we can either have a certain amount of difference, heat difference, yeah, or we try to bring down the thermal resistance, then the heat difference is not that high. There will always be heat difference, but how high it is uh, depends on the thermal resistance. And this is here. This device, this is device which is getting hot. This is a certain, certain thermal resistance. Hmm? If you have to get rid of a lot of power, this thermal resistance will not be sufficient uh, because uh, well, these this power losses are too high. So, for instance, if I'm not just operating a little fan like this, but a bigger fan yeah, or something more, then there would be more power on the output, so more power on the input. And if we take account that the efficiency is probably uh, constant, so we have 80% of efficiency, then we will say, okay, if input and output power are more, we have also more losses. Uh, Scaled losses simply. And then, if we have more losses, we have to get rid of more losses. The thermal resistance is the same because this device has not changed. So we have higher end temperature, higher difference of temp and temperature. So actually, how it looks like. Here's the time. Here would be, for instance, the Ambient temperature, the room temperature, the temperature of the air, like that. So this is temperature of the ambient. Yeah? And it's at some point in time, we turn on. On. So here we enter, we, we, we enter the, the, we turn on the power and the, the, Thermal losses, the losses will heat this up. So up to here, our temperature will look like that. At some point in time, we know we will reach an end temperature. Here we always have this delta theta, so the temperature difference, and the higher the temperature difference is getting, the, the more we will radiate. Yeah, and this looks like that. At the beginning it will heat up very fast and in the end it will stay constant because this temperature difference is sufficient to get loss of, to get rid of the power losses. If we have more power losses, it will heat up more. No? This is, looks, this is how it looks. No? If we really have a lot of power involved, yeah, then probably, very likely, it is not sufficient to use that device. Yeah. Then we have to take measures on how to get down this thermal, de thermal uh, resistance. And then it would look probably like that. Then we have cooling, yeah, heat sinks, yeah, and these heat sinks actually reduce the thermal resistance and so we can have more power radiated, the power, the power radiation is the same. Huh? Why we don't let this heat up just a little bit more? Because at a certain point in time, it would, this, there are silicon things and so inside, uh, semiconductors they are called, and those things simply melt. If they are getting too hot, they melt and then they are destroyed and no longer working. So we have to keep the temperature of the element at a certain level 
And to achieve this, we have them heat sinks. And if this is not enough, then we even add a fan. Yeah? There's also a heat sink. This is actually this is actually a heat sink of a of a PC processor. Yeah? Old one, but they still look the same. Efficiency. Actually, this thing is exactly the same also as, for instance, a gearbox. Gearbox, then this is not electric elements here. Yeah, it would be, for, for instance, torque and, 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 and uh, angular velocity. Power, torque multiplied by angular velocity. P equals M multiplied by omega. Here we have here, we have here. We have here one power at the at the entry of the of the gearbox and the output of the gearbox. We have another power, and the, we have also have an efficiency of the gearbox and the power losses. So the gearbox is getting warm, or an an electric motor. Then the input would be electric, the output would be mechanical power, yeah? and in between we have an efficiency because we are not getting out all electrical power we put in as, as mechanical power, yeah, the motor is getting warm. This is actually why it's getting warm. And if we have more elements in a row, yeah, for instance like here, because actually what we want from, from this fan, we want from this fan a flow, a, a, a wind, yeah, a certain uh, amount of airflow. Yeah. So we have here an efficiency of the DC-DC converter and let's say 50% 50% of the power which is added to the fan will be available as wind power. Hmm? So then we have, for instance, a global efficiency, yeah? eta total equals eta 1 multiplied by eta 2. Yeah? So if the eta 1 is now this 80.48% and eta 2 is, like said, for instance, 50%, because 50% of the electrical power is wind power, yeah? then we could calculate 0 0.8048 multiplied by 0 0.5. And what is the result? 0 0.8048 multiplied by 0 0.5. It's 0 0.4824. So it equals 40.24%. 24%. So only 40.24% are available, available as wind power. Put in 100% electric, electricity and I only earn 40.24%. That's efficiency. All right. And that's actually the end of the physical principles of electricity. That's very Efficiency is a very wide field. I'm talking about gearboxes, so it was not only of electricity, but physical principles of electricity. This was the name of this series. Yeah. The next thing we are looking into, yeah, there is an upcoming series about uh, simple electric circuits, how to calculate them. Calculation of simple electric circuits. This would be the next series of videos. You do not have to watch them, but I'm sure it helps. So, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.